Welcome to A Deeper Dive, where you, the viewers, have the opportunity to do the same work as the guest on Iyamla Fix My Life. This week, and for the next two weeks, we will be following the guests in a house of healing. The work we will be doing is designed to heal a black man's heart. Now, you don't need to be a black man to benefit from this work. Perhaps you are a black woman who has a son or a father or a brother, or you may be a white woman or a white man. You may be Latin or Asian, and you can still benefit from this work. You see, the intention of the House of Healing is to give us all a better understanding of the challenges faced by a particular group in our human community. Now, when you download your worksheet or when you're viewing this video, you can apply the lessons to yourself or to the black men you know or encounter. Now, if you are a black man, then I encourage you to find yourself among the guests. Then download your worksheet and apply the lessons and information to yourself. So let's dive in. You met the men in the House of Healing, six black men, ranging in ages from 28 to 46, who represent some of the common issues faced by many black men today and the labels that are often placed on them. In some cases, these labels accurately describe how the men have shown up in the world. In other cases, they're simply judgments and stereotypes that limit our ability to really know and understand the person behind the label. Of course, over the three House of Healing episodes, I work with the men to examine how they themselves promote the validity of the labels. We look at the feelings they have about being labeled, and more importantly, we work so that they learn to live beyond the labels. As always, there's so much that you don't see because we have 42 minutes an episode. So let me tell you about the process. Each morning, the men had a physical workout. It's so important for men, all men, not just black men, to get their motors running early. You see, men are doers, so it's important for them to get their energy flowing so that they can face whatever they meet in a day. Because when a man has stagnant energy in his body, his mental and emotional energy will also become stagnant. This is when he becomes uncommunicative, unresponsive. Also, each morning, the men bless their heads. In this episode, you saw me give the men instructions for just how to do that, and it was an essential part of their day. When a man has a clear and balanced mind, it's less likely that he will act out aggressively, and it's more likely that his thoughts and thinking process will be grounded and focused. The head blessing ceremony is an ancient and sacred ritual that epitomizes and supports the power of the mind to create and direct life experiences. Now I'll tell you how you can get your own head blessing kit later on in the video, maybe for you or the men in your life. Also, the men and I began each day with what we called a village meeting. This is where we all came together to discuss their thoughts and feelings about their labels, about the issues they face, and how difficulty manifested in each of their lives when they didn't have control of themselves or their minds. Some of this you will see, much of it you won't. This is where most of our work got done in those village meetings. The men learned how they lived down to the labels and what was required of them individually to live beyond them. Now, I was both shocked and honored at how open and honest, accessible, and vulnerable the men were in these sessions. We did some really, really good work. And by the end, you will see and feel the results. The other thing is that each day, the men left the House of Healing to go out and perform community service. Why? Because as I said, men are doers. They must have a feeling of accomplishment. When a man doesn't feel that he's accomplishing something of value, he may develop feelings of insecurity, inadequacy, or failure. The problem is that most men have not been taught 
how to express or neutralize those toxic feelings when they come up. And as a result, they may act out in self-destructive ways. Finally, each day, the men had a session with a male mentor. As a woman, there are just certain places I should not and cannot go with a man. It's what my grandmother used to call men folk business. And because I knew about that and I respected it, I brought in men who could talk to the men and take them into places in their experiences that I know nothing about. As you saw tonight, Devon Franklin was the first mentor. And since I wasn't present in the room, I have no clue what they talked about. But I can tell you it had a powerful impact on all of the men. Now, let's talk about CIA, because this was the premise of the work I did with the men. CIA represents character, integrity, and accountability. These three powerful principles and tools have been overlooked and underestimated by many black men. In this first episode, we dealt specifically with character, your way of being based on your personal values and morals that determine and define your sense of worth and esteem, character. It determines how you hold yourself within yourself and how you see yourself in relationship to others. Character, it determines how you show up and how you behave in the world. Now what we discovered is that for a variety of reasons, the men had lost touch with their own values and character. For Clarence, it was the lack of a male role model, his association with the streets and his interface with the criminal justice system. He considered himself a loser who had committed unforgivable errors. For Michael McCary, the former member of Boys to Men, and Michael Angelo, a songwriter, composer, and former member of the group Portrait, their character and sense of value was tied to their identity as a performer. So when their careers ended, they had a difficult time finding balance and a sense of self beyond the lights and the headlines. Now, for Mike Bass, his break with the brothers in Boys to Men left him feeling abandoned and betrayed. Feelings common to many black men who have no idea how to process or neutralize these feelings. And as a result, they just get angry and stay that way, unable to see how they contribute to their own downfall. For Kevin McCall and Tyrone, the youngest men in the House of Healing, both of them were dealing with issues related to interpersonal relationships with women. Kevin, who has two children he's unable to see because of his aggressive behavior, behavior that he learned from his father in an attempt not to appear weak. He was literally heartbroken and unable to see how his way of being created the problems he was living through in his life. And Tyrone, whose dishonest and dishonorable behavior with women had cost him what he believed was the love of his life. He was doing his best to rally back from a broken heart, but he was blaming the women without any real concept of how his lack of character had contributed to what he had experienced. Then we have Terrence, a powerful and gifted man who also had spent many years behind bars as a result of his lack of direction, lack of guidance, and a lack of modeling of what manhood and fatherhood really was. Let me talk about Clarence for a moment because Clarence had a very clear vision for himself and his life. However, he was unable to realize or activate his vision because of his past, spending so many years in prison. And this father of three had been labeled and branded by society as a criminal. So he felt that he would never be able to overcome the errors of his past. His everyday battle in life was to move away from his history in order to create a better life for himself and his children. Unfortunately, he just didn't know where to start. 
like so many black men who make errors or who spend time in the criminal justice system. They come out and they don't know where to start. Clarence felt that he could never overcome the label that followed him everywhere in spite of his attempts and desires to change. You might remember that Terrence was the father of Tylera, Lyra Galore, who was a guest in the Women's House of Healing. Now, Terrence is a classic example of the aggression and bravado many black men demonstrate when they feel terrified and lost. Terrence had made up his mind about what he needed, and he had a great deal of difficulty hearing, receiving, or exploring any other possibilities. Now, I can imagine that many viewers have already made their minds up about Terrence, who he is and how he was and what he should and shouldn't be doing. And here's the challenge with that. It's exactly what happens when black men are judged by their behavior without a deeper dive and an investigation of their heart. For Terrence, beyond that hard, cold exterior, there was a frightened, broken little boy who was being enabled by a woman to stay exactly where he was because it served her needs. You'll see more about that in upcoming episodes. So our first episode was just about getting to know the men and learning about their issues. And you'll see how each man becomes able to apply what he's learning to his own life, taking the skills and the tools that I and the mentors share with them and applying them to their real life experiences. So what's your work this week, okay? Your work is to identify and get clear about the labels you've placed on black men. Watching the show and hearing the guests, it's probable that you will see someone who reminds you of someone you know. It's also probable that you had some thoughts and feelings and perhaps some judgments about the men. Very often we judge people with our first glance because they remind us of someone or something. Then we expect no more of that person because of what we believe to be true without a closer investigation. Now, this happens all the time among all people, but it is particularly damaging when it happens for black men because of the historical social commentary promoted about who they are and what they are capable of. Like people of all races, black men have issues. They have issues because they have not been given the tools and the information required to navigate their lives in the world. But what's particularly difficult for black men to navigate is what they feel within themselves about themselves in a world that expects much less from them than it does from other groups of people. I believe that white men are expected to be successful and wealthy, and white women are often seen as fragile but productive. Black women are more often than not considered to be hard, strong, angry, and unbreakable. Latin men and women are often silent, unseen, and unheard. Asian men are considered to be smart and industrious. But black men are all too often seen as dark, dangerous, and dispensable. Of course, this isn't true about how all people think and feel about black men, but at the same time, it does exist. So based on what you've seen in this week's episode, I invite you to get clear about your own thoughts, feelings, and expectations as it relates to black men. Now for the black men out there who are watching this, and for those who know and love black men, I have a little exercise for you. It's the same exercise that I did with the men in the House of Healing. So I need you to get a pen and a piece of paper. Once you have it, pick a number from one to eight and write it down. Okay, now here's a label for you. If you pick number one, your label is lost. Number two, the label is dangerous. Number three, thug. Number four, stud. Number five, nice guy. Number six, player. Number seven, useless. And number eight, absent. Okay, got it? Good. Now, 
just reflect on the label you have chosen and how it has, if it has, shown up in your life in the body of a black man. As a black man, how have you lived down to this label? Or how do you respond when this label is placed upon you or associated with you? How does this label impact your relationships with women, with other black men, and with people in general? More important, in response to the label you have chosen, or any of these labels, ask yourself, how does it impact what you expect from and for black men? You see, in life, we don't get what we ask for. We get what we expect. And if you are not a black man, just consider the label you have chosen and how it impacts your beliefs, ideas, and relationships and expectations with black men. This can be a very enlightening exercise if you're willing to examine your own mind and heart about what you think and feel in the privacy of your own being. Just do it and see what you come up with. Now, if you'd like to have a head blessing kit for yourself or someone you know, please visit InnovisionsWorldwide.com. Click on Products and you'll find the link to the kit. Under Books, you'll also find a link to The Spirit of a Man, a vision of transformation for black men and the women who love them, which is the text that the guests in the House of Healing work with during our time together. So I want to thank you for tuning in and invite you to join me for the next two episodes of The House of Healing, Healing a Black Man's Heart. Until next time, stay in peace and not pieces. Mm -hmm.